thing I'm going to talk about is the Air Quality Egg. It's a collaboration I'm working on uh, with a, a large group of people, a really great uh, global uh, community. And I think that is actually what makes the Air Quality Egg really unique. I mean, the stationary environmental units, you're, you're going to see some later today. It's, it's you know, it's, it's being done by a lot of people, right? It's very, really exciting how accessible these kind of tool sets are, have become. The Air Quality Egg, I think, is unique in that it is entirely community driven. It's at probably the most democratic project uh, I've ever participated uh, in. And yeah. it's really exciting to see different communities um, in Amsterdam um, and, uh, and in New York uh, working on it, on you know, the fabrication, the development, the productization of it. Yeah, really democratic. But I think what makes it democratic is that every time there has been, you know, a meetup or a decision needing to be made, we have a Google group, we've got a wiki, these are all publicly accessible. Every time that there's an event or a meetup, all of that is publicly advertised and open all the time to anyone to just join in at any moment. In Amsterdam, a lot of people use bikes and are in the street all the time. So we, would, we were thinking about, like, what, let's do something with air quality. And we, we didn't know if it was if, it, if you could do something with air quality, but uh, we just wanted to give it a go. So here we are. I did the first prototype, and then New York built the second prototype. I've been involved working with Joseph Vedra and Ed Borden at Patch Bay in creating the air quality network, um, the air quality egg device that they've been they've been playing with and hacking on here. Our strategy here, I think, is going to be like super organized. Yeah. We're going to be like. Yeah. moving and people are going to like gravitate to us. If you look at the questions there, there's basically three categories. There's a te technical uh, category, then there's uh, the user interface, yeah. and then there's uh, the more the branding stuff, you yeah. know? Huh? So you're pretty, pretty, pretty hardware, good, right? hardware, yeah. software, good, right? branding. Awesome. Yeah, we need to get hardware as soon as possible so we can dump it on a table because right. that's going to bring people over. Yeah. Can we claim a table then now? We, we have, have a table. Have we have a table. The workshop is announced to be in uh, room 102. Yeah. We're doing it here. We're doing everything here. Having the collaboration between between Amsterdam and New York and London is that uh, you sort of break away from your local culture, and I think that's a, that's, a, that's a good thing. I think this is a this is a process, you know. And I think what's what's the, the important thing to understand is that like we're building this story together, and um, and as the community expands, the story will become clearer. And today and tomorrow, you know, we're going to try and make some headway on like more of the more maybe the more technical things here but really these more these technical things are are second still secondary to the community so what do you think are you in are you in we got one yes daniel press this press this yes. awesome Hi. nice to meet you daniel yes the uh, undergraduate is in social communications advertising now i'm studying sociology we need you. Yeah. So we can you because we have a couple of challenges. So this one basically has to do with the technology. So that's yeah. not really your thing. But this one has to do with. So the question is like, do we still want to give this thing a bit of interactivity? You know, what kind, what should it do, and what's the story that this then could tell? I think, I think what we're doing is is different in some ways. But the point is, is that is that this is a community. So well, you want it to be a, a, an open or a closed? It's community? actually open. an open community, right? That's why you need to like make people realize and change their behaviors, right? Like, so well, this so is the quite people important. in this community want to change their behavior. They want to they want to understand what's going on so that they can yeah. they can change behavior. A Kickstarter in two weeks. Kickstarter is a great way to expand the community. That's why we're doing it. It's not because of the money. We want to do it for the community. It's uh, it's about sensors because uh, if you have a thing, it needs to communicate something. Code is very good. I, I, the code took a long time. If, if, we, if we're going to mass produce them, we want to, to be able to sell it for like 50 euros. And with a nice enclosure and, and, and uh, manual, yeah. and then uh, and some more features. The more sensors we can put in it, the better. But currently, the sensors are a limiting factor. If How we, many do you have? Like one. This is uh, this one is two sensors, but we need three, we need at least two more because all the sensors are also humidity dependent and temperature dependent, which means that you always need a temperature and humidity sensor. We realize one you can go to the talks today and realize how much a challenge that is to do it yourself that you know they, they realize that well building a really good sensor is going to cost you a, you know a lot of money and that this 10,000 or 50,000 or 60,000 dollar sensor you know package is not totally unjustified in the amount of engineering that had to go behind it but 
at the same time, we don't know the processes that happen. So the, the, the political nature of the open source movement, I think, in a lot of ways is deconstructing this kind of very closed, closed door thing. The, the kind of the distributed the nature of it, I think it's, it's totally relevant and totally parallel to that. It's, it's, it's that kind of, we'll, we'll take it into our own hands in a lot of way. And we become very much reliant on our own ability to improvise. Um, because we cannot assume that the world that we know today will be the same as tomorrow. For that you need a skill to be creative and to be, and for that you need, you need curiosity and for that you need trust. What, what they don't have is an enclosure. <laughs> There's no enclosure. I just, I, I mean, it's just, it's the, it's the nano. We need enclosures for our air quality egg, but the, the egg is not finished yet. Uh, yeah, the manufacturing of the egg is not done. The chicken is not ready. So we're going to simulate an egg with a flurry cup, which is the closest thing we could find in our minds to an egg shaped thing. Hmm, further up. Further up. There! Yeah. yeah what is the cup? Oh, you see, you mean the white one over there? Yeah, the white one. We take two ice cream and then six of those cups for our science no problem, project. Thank you. And thanks. I thought it was in the same building. No, no, it's not. Okay, unit zero one. So I it's a different building. It's listed as workshop. It's challenge to me to just go to So this is how you make an egg ice cream. So you go to Burger King or McDonald's or your favorite local snack place. Punch with it with a sophisticated tool like that. Yo, we're about uh, people return from their mission. No, I think we're with. No. Um, yeah, no, I don't know, they have not returned. Power cord. We're, we're done, we're ready. And you have a cup. Well, we're about to start up there. It's perfectly designed on? for the egg, you would almost say. I'm coming out. So, connected to the cord. And I think that's it. A baby can do it. Anyway, this is... to install a sensor outside of this window. Okay, we'd like to go outside here and put six sensors up. The, the infrastructure that the data flows through between a device and another device or a device and another and a person is, is really needs to be sort of transparent. The, the great part about using a platform like Patch Bay is that it's uniform. So I can create something now that uploads data to Patch Bay and then I can create something that downloads data from Patch Bay and it can read anything. I can, all I have to do is basically program the, 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 just a little bit of output from a device or program a little bit of input from a device and all the other stuff is handled. And so in that sense that the, the, the virtual network in a lot of ways is non-existent or is all, all present depending on how you want to look at it but you know it's really about the the thing and the end user then that's that's the the, the perfect place to be in, in a lot of ways is the, the stuff that happens in between doesn't need to you don't need to know about it you know that's the magic in a lot of ways like whatever it doesn't it, it gets there it comes from here goes to there in between there is magic let's make some make some magic right, I think we can go to that other building, that other UCL building where we were yesterday. All right. All right, water stones. There's no window, though. Let's do water stones. I need to use just a power outlet, and I need to hang. No. Um, just for today. Probably not. Without probably not. I'm afraid. This, he, he's, I have this card with your logo on it. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> without permission, we've got to do it. All right. Okay, going over there. The computer fair. Uh, come on. Um, You're all right. Yeah, can I, can I just ask a favor? I need to just use this power. Can I use the power outlet behind there? I just want to put something over by the window. It's this, uh, this thing. This, show me, it's, a, it's an air quality sensor. It's not going to blow up, is it? No, it's not going to blow up, I swear. Is that cool? I'm going to go with it. I'm afraid, though, that if four hours of data is not really going to be enough, but I could be wrong. Maybe it's enough to see something. Oh, yeah, the patch railing. Did you chit, 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 chit it? Yeah, here I have Joe and prototyping the sensors and soldering up the circuits and working on debugging everything, and it's getting information. Whether that information is pertinent, that, that's going to be the, the long haul of this. And 
I think that there's a lot of presentations today specifically about validating this data scientifically and validating it under research and then also validating it personally. And, and I think that the, the personal approach is going to be much more successful, I, I feel, right away than, than a research approach. Accurate government stuff, uh, well, from KCL, from King's College, and that's uh, 15 minutes. Nice. That's what I do. So, just so. I mean, well, we we're doing every five seconds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, that's what we're doing. Right. Okay. And one of the issues I would have with it is um, how, d how credible is it? Because we, we're always suspect about government data. There's not enough of it. It may have been massaged, whatever. You know, so, so hence the idea, let's go out and correct citizen data. But then you've got to, I think you've got to sell that citizen data to the citizens. Even if our data is not valid scientifically or in, in that technical direction, I'm hoping that we get the right information to say there needs to be more study. That, that, that air quality sensors like this really can be uh, the go-to for application of real high-end sensors. I mean, the, the government has picked in from places to put sensors, but what if we can say, well, there's real pockets here that you need to be careful of, or there, you know, right around the school, there's this traffic intersection that, you know, we have really weird readings, and we've changed our sensor out three times, and we're still getting really weird readings. You know, further investigation, and that's a, that's a win right there. You know, whether or not the the data is great or not, I don't really care. Uh, so we came uh, here with some prototypes. Um, do you want to show, show a naked prototype? High class uh, BK fusions, real dairy ice cream uh, <laughs> closure. closure. This is uh, high quality D DIY stuff we're talking about here. So we've got on the uh, on the boards on the sensor units carbon monoxide, uh, NO2 uh, temperature and humidity sensors, and these are built off of a nanode, which is an Ethernet enabled uh, Arduino compatible board. Three of these hanging outside of uh, different places. All the data will send to PatchBay. To PatchBay.com. Right. So there's a lot of noise in the data. I uh, I have a suspicion that since these were packed with so much in the last 24 hours, a lot of the sensors are not necessarily, right now the data is not so reliable. Basic graph is showing 24 hours of data, and we don't have 24 hours of data. So the first flat line is, uh, is like the first 24 hours that these were in our suitcase in the apartment. So this, this is the first time that we've had these units together and we have no way to interpret this data yet. We have no idea what this means, but now we are... Uh, we're a step closer. We're a step closer. One of the interesting things about the air quality egg will be, I think, uh, once it's uh, once uh, it's deployed and there's a, a, a fair amount of people using it, uh, that will make um, uh, enough data available for people to to use and then so what will be interesting then is actually what will people do with that data. From an academia standpoint it's nice to, ba to make but it's much nicer to see it in the hands of thousands of yeah. people worldwide yeah. using it and seeing all the data streaming to the patch bay network, seeing lots of graphs all around the world. The technology is facilitating and people's mindset is also facilitating this interconnectivity of everything with everyone at all times. The result is that you get more and more and more stuff to connect to, but also more formats. And so it becomes more difficult to get connected to all these things. So I, I really, really think that everybody should go into this mindset of sharing stuff and working towards something that can be interconnected rather than a bunch of very interesting applications, but that are sitting in their local minimum. We have to go to the global minimum. Put it that way. We are not organized yet, but there are many, many uh, separate projects all over the world where people are doing this. Uh, there are projects in New York, in Brazil, in, in California, in, 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 in Italy. Basically, everywhere where people are concerned about their quality, their air quality. The William Gibson line about the future is not here. Uh, the future is already here, it's just unevenly distributed. It's the same thing. We were already living in, in a heavily connected world. I don't think we'll ever see a point where everything is perfectly and ubiquitously connected because that would mean that we'd stopped making any kind of change. Um, there's always going to be places where there's loose connections or places where there's no connection. And the challenge isn't to solve that. The challenge is to figure out what things need to be appropriately connected and how to make that happen and what things to leave well enough alone.